Listening there to Senator Harry Reid, the outgoing minority leader in the U.S. Senate, fewer than 60 days before he retires from the Senate in that position, giving what can only be described as an impassioned speech on the floor of the Senate, uh, making the point, the argument that uh, behavior that it, he described as bigoted should not be normalized. He went on to describe a number of incidents of hate chronicled by the Southern Poverty Law Center that have taken place since the election, which he tied to the rhetoric uh, that had come from President uh, Trump during the campaign, President-elect Trump during the campaign. Uh, quite an impassioned speech from Harry, Harry Reid there. I want to bring in my panel now to react to this. Uh, we have Jennifer Jacobs. She's from Bloomberg, national political reporter there, Matt, Matt Beiser from the Boston Globe, uh, and Mike Rogers, former uh, majority member uh, on the House Intelligence Committee and also recently with the transition team uh, of Trump. If, if I could just ask you to react to this, perhaps you, you, you were inside the Trump transition team as you're listening to Harry Reid's criticism there of the rhetoric and the effect that it's having on the country. What's your reaction? Well, first of all, I think you have to be careful. There are riots in the streets today. I think there's all of this unfortunate rhetoric feeds in to both sides of this problem. Uh, I would hope that the majority leader would take his time to try to de-escalate this problem. I just think he's throwing gas on the fire. I never saw it. I was in the Trump team. Uh, half of the team that I worked with on the national security team were women, by the way. There were minorities included there. But nobody looked at it that way. They looked at individuals who had jobs and responsibilities to get done. Uh, I'm hoping that we can get back to that kind of conversation. The longer that Harry Reid, I think, uses the floor of the United States Senate to continue to heighten uh, people who are going to do dumb things, and they are racist and they're wrong. And guess what? That's going to happen, unfortunately. I just don't think we need to rise to the level of chronicling each one, making it sound like every neighborhood, every school, every location has these people in them. I just don't believe that's true. I think America is in a better place. Rhetoric will help us get in a better place. I think his rhetoric isn't going to do that. Jennifer Jacobs, he took particular aim at the appointment of, of Steve Bannon as a senior advisor uh, to the president and in his past statements and many pieces that appeared on Breitbart, the news organization that he ran. Uh, does that have power at this point? Yeah, I, well, for sure. And it's, he just seemed to be re-upping the things he had said in that statement last week where he said, you know, Putin and ISIS are applauding the victory of Donald Trump and, and that people have the, you know, it's rational for people to be afraid of this administration after all the things that Donald Trump had done. So it seems like he just wanted to repeat the things that he had said in, in, in writing last week and get that back out there in front of a TV camera. But yeah, it, for sure, there has been a lot of talk about how people are afraid of, of Steve Bannon and what he represents. Uh, is Steve Bannon a white nationalist? His, his defender his, his allies say absolutely not, that that's, that's not true. He's just a good conservative who wants good conservative things for this country. Uh, but there is no doubt that his, his website did have that sort of rhetoric, and he allowed it to be published. Gave a platform. Matt Ryan, I wonder, as you listen to this, are people listening to Senator Harry Reid now? Is this a powerful voice at this point? I think probably within the Democratic Party he is uh, still. And, and you, you have this sense today, of course, we're seeing that the House... Democratic uh, turmoil, you know, among House Democrats, and I think uh, Harry Reid is vocalizing a portion of the party that that wants to sort of punch back at Donald Trump uh, at every opportunity. Um, there's another portion of the party that is kind of ready to work with him on infrastructure and you know on some of the shared policies that they're starting to see. So I, I think that that Harry Reid is, of course, the outgoing uh, leader of the Senate Democrats. Uh, we haven't heard quite as much from Chuck Schumer, who, who may be more inclined to try and deal with Donald Trump. Um, but I, I, I think that that Harry Reid is definitely vocalizing what exists in, in a large sec section of the Democratic Party. Although he doesn't, have, like as you say, doesn't have to stick around and work right. with this president yeah. and these people on the Hill. Congressman Matt, Jennifer, please stick around. Uh